probably stand back a little bit. Stand back a little bit. Stand back a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. These gentlemen right here are going to tell us a story about events that they all witnessed. They are only going to tell it in monologues, though. They're not going to interact with each other. They're just going to tell you their side of the story through the lost art of the monologue. To get things started, from you guys. Starting in 1992, I worked as a moil. <laughs> September the 12th, 2001, I joined the TSA. <laughs> I knew that something in this country had to change, and I wanted to be on the front lines of those change. I was going to make sure that nobody brought three ounces of shampoo on the airplane. <laughs> I knew that it would undermine our national strength and security, and that if people had more than two ounces of any liquid, the Chinese would take over, or the Arabs, or whoever. <laughs> There's always somebody standing in line, waiting to take the place of the lead dog, and I was going to make sure that it didn't happen. I'm Bob Coleman, the world's second pregnant man. <laughs> Formerly Roberta Coleman, an insignificant housewife in St. Louis. I have been on this plane for 17 hours. <laughs> Gate 51, American Airlines Terminal, outside the St. Louis airport. I am 8 months and 29 days and 23 hours and 54 minutes pregnant! <laughs> And whatever business I have down there, I'm having a baby pretty quick. Hello, my name is Anil Punjab. I'm here on business. You know, it's very, very difficult to get through security in the airport these days. I've lived in America for 27 years. And today I'm flying to Europe of all places to make a business deal with a German company. I work for an American company. And then they stop me in the line, and there's this guy here, and apparently I forgot. I've got some hand sanitizer in my pocket. <laughs> and so he tries to stop me, and he says, what is this? What is this? Is this some anthrax liquid? It has been a slow day on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I'd launched the laughing baby. I made Chate Zande a, a name that some people knew. But I was waiting for the next big meme to hit. So more people would watch me. So I could get into more heads. That day at the airport, it just got interesting. Oh, I thought I was still at my job. I'm an air traffic controller. And let me tell you. It's so hard being an air traffic controller when you have narcolepsy. But <laughs> thanks to the union, I got in. <laughs> Let me tell you though, it's not all tea and cakes when you're an air traffic controller. There was one day about uh, two years ago when it just got crazy down at the airport. The new guy in TSA, he started feeling up on this Arab guy. It just went nuts. I heard about it from Burma in the coffee lounge. He apparently got his hands all the way down inside. So I explained to the guy <laughs> that he looked about as American as a falafel pie, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't care what kind of passport, ID, birth certificate, whatever you've got, your skin, wrong color, your accent, wrong sound, you need to step to the side. <laughs> 
my junk, bro. <laughs> Don't tase me, bro. I'm from India. I'm not even a Muslim. I'm a Hindu. I don't understand why you're stopping me. I am a pregnant man. I am about to explode on this airplane. I should not have said that. <laughs> Suddenly, I got this warning message from a pilot on an American Airlines flight saying that there was a pregnant man on board. So immediately, I called up my best YouTube pal. <laughs> I told him he had to get his ass down to the airport because. So I opened his briefcase. And, okay, it was just papers in there, but some of those papers were written in a foreign language. And that is inherently suspicious. He opened up my briefcase. Thank God he couldn't understand what I had written in there because he would have found out the secret documents that I had. It was this weird gold light inside the briefcase. That's all anybody could see. And I was just about to wave him through when suddenly... Because I'd fallen asleep at the air traffic control tower, the pregnant man's plane crashed in through the gate. <laughs> I know. You think these things only happen in movies. Well, they don't. <laughs> I was sitting there at the top of the escape chute because I'm the guy that always sits by the exit door because I don't believe that any of you a-holes are going to open the door. <laughs> and I'm sitting there on top of the slide. I just told the guy to unwind his turban because I heard some ticking in there. When out from the window, I see a baby shoot down the... <laughs> And then a bunch of firemen run over. Meanwhile, this guy's out with his video camera in the confusion. Take this job and shove it! Got my beer! I'm out! I was so worried that my turban clock was going to fall down. <laughs> and this really kind Arab man comes up to me with a box cutter and cuts the umbilical cord! <laughs> Thank God I got my box cutter through security. They never checked for that. 